Hello everybody, my name's Tracy from Art Fibre Stitch and I think this time we're going to have a little look at fly stitch. In fact, we're going to make a whole landscape with just fly stitch. But to start with, let's have a look at how, how fly stitch comes together. So let's say A, B, C and D. We've done A and then up at A, down at B, which is beside it, and then up again below it, and then the last stroke is D. So it's up, down. This time I'm not going to go beside. I'm going to do it higher on one side, but somewhere between the two and below, and then down to anchor. Now I'm just doing a few different types here to show you the variations of it. So we could have maybe a wide one there and we won't go down very far to do the next stitch and then just maybe a tiny little anchor stitch there. And I like this one because it looks to me like a bird flying in the sky. So you can change not only the threads that you use, but also how you do it. It is just that basically up and then down again to the right, bringing your thread up um, and then down again. You'll see what I mean with the, keeping that thread out the way seems to trap it. Okay, so here in this one, I'm showing you that you can use quite a few of them together one on top of the other. There, and we've created a little leaf shape. So that's just a few of the variations. There's so much that you can do with this stitch and let's have a little closer look. Yep, we've got a bird, we've got a leaf, We've got a V kind of shape and a Y kind of shape. Now let's look here. I've joined some together like I did before, just doing it underneath each other. But look at the variations that we have. Hmm. So I'm going to do one here for you. up at A and then down at B. C is in the center of those two underneath somewhere and then a little stitch underneath to anchor. Now because I'm doing a, a fern or leaf kind of shape like this, I'm not doing a really large um, anchoring stitch. I'm just doing smallish ones and that's mainly so that we can just have these fronds closer together. So there. Now let's have a closer look here. See how I've only done the tiny little anchor stitch. At the end, I've done a bigger one as a stem, but all of those fronds are very close together. On this side here, see how I've just done longer stitches on the right hand side? You know, that looks like the leaf is curled. Here I've been a bit more random and there's a larger space, a larger um, anchoring stitch at the end that sort of shows a, a wider space between. The last one that I just showed you was curving. Huh? So each time I bring it further over to the right. But there's so much variety just using this one little example of stitch. Here I wanted to show you that smaller one that we did, the wide one, the shallow one with the tiny little stem. I like birds in the sky. Now, 
now we're going to have a look at a little project I thought I'd put together to show you how we could do a whole landscape if we wanted using what we've learned about fly stitch. So I've used three pieces of green material and I've just glued them down onto a hand dyed background I have. It's got a nice bluish sky and right now I'm just going to do what I've already shown you just with a single uh, stitch, uh, sorry, strand of, of um, stranded cotton. Something more delicate looking. And I'm just putting them on that horizon line to break up that hill. And you'll see here that I, I try and not do them all the same. I've got one there and then maybe I'll do one. What's this one going to be? A little bit lower. So it's more natural if they're not all perfectly in line. I don't really do perfect as I've said before. I just like to go where it flows. up a little bit now so you don't get too bored with me but it's the same stitch and we're just creating what do they look like um either trees that have lost their leaves or maybe like pine trees or fir trees or something but from a distance yeah you can see that 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 looks like trees so on this other side on the darker one here i'm trying some thicker uh, thread it's variegated and uh, you know I'm sort of thinking well the sun would hit those leaves so they'd be brighter so I'm doing some bright ones at the top there also it breaks up that big dark green patch once again I'm staggering them um, so that you know some are higher some are lower but it breaks up that line they look like they're marching down the slope. There we are. Next, I thought I'd have a go at, I didn't have quite the color I wanted, so I used two strands of a, of a teal kind of color and one of a light green. And I've put the three of them together through a, a needle and I'm using that you know and parts of it glint with the lighter color and parts of it have the darker and it's sort of like almost having my own variegated thread that I've just made through putting different different threads through the needle at once So I think you can see there we've got that variegation of colour and I think that works really well. So you could do as much or as little as you like here but it's really just to show you how you can use this stitch and just create a whole landscape with it you know, by using different varieties of it, different threads, different thicknesses. You know how that, those ones I did first were in a, um, a, a much finer one uh, thread. So, you know, they look more delicate. They they look like they're more in the distance. But I'm liking that using two of one uh, stranded cotton, one of another, because I think that yeah, that looks pretty good. Right, I'm doing some single ones here, some single fly stitches. I'm not trying to stack them as I had before, one under the other. I'm just doing simple Ys. And I've got a long stem on it. 
So, you know, this is more like what I would use for weeds or something or, you know, teasels, um, bushes, all kinds of different things really. But I am attaching these pieces of material whilst I'm doing this stitch. There's no other stitch involved here. I'm just going to do the whole thing with just fly stitch to just show you how effective it is. And so it's holding it down and it's creating the marks that we want to suggest foliage. I've taken a lighter colour now and I'm just doing the same with just a, a thinner thread and I'm just making it look like grasses or something like that. Just breaking up that line that's there between the dark and the light. Really is good to hold it down, but I just love the marks that it's making. So I think we've got a, a good view here of, I, I'm giving you a good idea of um, what we can do. And let's continue on now with a different kind of thread. I'm looking at the foreground now. I've actually done some sort of ferns and now I'm trying to do well a nice flower it's it's fly stitch again like like I've shown you but each time the anchoring stitch goes into the center of a flower and then I go back out again I still doing that same basic stitch doing that thread out the way and into the center again and as you go around you're making this nice uh, delicate flower so I decided it looks looks pretty good but you know why just have one that, that never sort of suits to just, just have one so I did a, a, another one a partial one just to fill in that foreground a little bit with some some interest Right, well, there's plenty more we could do. You could fill the whole thing up if you wanted. But right now, I'm sort of thinking we'll pop some of those birds in the sky using that very shallow one. So we go... We don't go down very far. We're not after a Y. We're just after a little tiny, tiny deviation there and then a little anchoring stitch. And to me, that is a bird's wings in the sky as they're disappearing. The main thing is to just trap that. It's not a straight stitch. You're, you're trapping that from A to B. C comes up and traps it further down so that it ends up in a, in a Y or a V shape. There. And by using some smaller and some bigger I've made it appear like they're heading off flying high. Well, I hope that's given you a really good um, idea of what we can do with this and some of the variations. See it doesn't look like much and then you put the surround around it and suddenly there you are. There's your little landscape. Looks pretty good. But, you know, there's a lot more you could do there. You could certainly fill that up with trees and, and flowers. But I thought I'd show you a few more things. Here I've used it to 
anchored down that little silk flower in, and made a centre for that flower at the same time. It really is uh, so versatile. And here, if you can see, I've used it on that butterfly, on that wing, and it's made the veins in the wing. Same here with the flower. I'm just holding it down at the same time as I'm making some central marks. Well, it's a lovely little stitch. I showed you in the first instance how we can use it as a whole landscape. Here's another. I really like it here. It just looks like a burnt landscape to me, like a uh, after the bushfire. And there we are. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you have, don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. I'm Tracy from Art Fibre Stitch. You can find me on any of the links below. Thanks for watching.